so thank you, and it's a pleasure and an honor uh, to be here. Uh, so I'm a, a biomedical engineer, and I've been in the field of biomedical engineering for about 20 years or so. Like all the new, other new fellows, I've been given the same three questions. I'll, I'll try to answer them in a slightly different way, just to mix things up, but there will be some common threads. You'll hear a lot. You've probably already heard a lot about the fourth industrial revolution. I'll be talking about that uh, a little bit today. Uh, but um, my particular slant is in uh, medical devices, and uh, it gives me the advantage of uh, bringing these along. So I'm happy to pass, uh, pass this around as a show and tell, if you will. Uh, because that, that particular device uh, is a bit of plastic. Don't worry, it's, um, it, it's uh, not a loaded gun. Um, but, but it's, a, it's a way of embodying uh, eight years of work that I did with, with many other people at the University of Oxford. So let me back up and talk a little bit about my, my background. Uh, so I'm a product of the University of Queensland. I did an undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering at UQ. Wanted to go into industry, was talked into doing research and did my PhD in, in an area called hypervelocity aerodynamics. Uh, a two minute conversation changed my career plan entirely uh, instead of continuing to work on rockets as most people know them, I uh, went to the University of Oxford to use rockets to fire vaccines into the skin. And that's a mock-up of uh, that, that particular device. Before September 11, we were able to travel with, uh, with loaded guns, but, uh, but things have changed. Uh, in that eight years, uh, when I was over there, as, uh, first as a postdoc for a little while, and then uh, as, a, as a lecturer, it was an amazing apprenticeship in, in innovation. I learned a lot about how to take ideas forward, how to work in inter interdisciplinary teams, learn about biology, uh, and that's, that's quite humbling as well. But also how to take those ideas forward and turn them into products. And uh, indeed that adventure there became um, Oxford's most successful spin-off company, which was sold for $1.3 billion. In 2006, uh, a lot of things were taking place in Queensland at the time. Of course, they still are. There's an election today. But, and, and the cricket, of course. Uh, but um, the Smart State Initiative uh, was, was really gathering steam and uh, there's a few fellows here in the room that uh, had a big thumbprint uh, on that. So uh, Paul Greenfield at the University of Queensland had a really was, was, was a key part of that. And indeed, uh, the AIBN was a, a brainchild uh, of this activity and Peter Gray, I think, is, is in the room, ATSI fellow, uh, the, the inaugural director uh, of, of the AIBN. I bring this up because in 2006 I arrived back at uh, the University of Queensland in, in a new role and uh, to, to chase a new idea, which is a little bit smaller, uh, called, called the nano patch. Uh, so this is the, the device here. I'm not sure if you're ha happy to catch it, but I'll, I'll throw, it, throw it down there. So well done. Uh, what's it all about? Why am I doing that? Uh, I'll just cut forward through the figures to this. Uh, my, my compass through all of this is to put my skills to work as an engineer to tackle global healthcare problems. And indeed, this is a picture of work uh, that, that I did in Papua New Guinea, a usability study, applying the nano patch to put it to work to replace the needle and syringe, a next gen beyond the needle, beyond um, the, the gene gun that's being passed around, uh, to advance uh, vaccines in a significant way. Working within the AIBN, I helped take this idea forward, formed a research group, of course. In 2011, I uh, realised with, with great animal model data, it was time to turn it into something real. So I founded a company called Vaxis and uh, ran an interesting experiment uh, for about four years or so of being a professor as well as heavily involved uh, within the company uh, as well. Now Vaxis has been taking the nano patch forward. It's partnered with Merck and the World Health Organization. The clinical data is now out and it's a significant activity, at least in, in, in our world. Our next question was to do with uh, challenges, uh, to do with 2030 in our particular field. Well, as, as luck would have it, I've just come off a, a plane from uh, Dubai, uh, where I was working with the World Economic Forum's Brains Trust uh, on entrepreneurship and innovation for the fourth industrial revolution on this topic of uh, what to do uh, with 2030. If I zone in, just provide a couple of snapshots uh, on this in, in healthcare. Let me set the scene. Uh, the devices I'm passing around, um, I'm not sure where the gene gun is just, just now. Uh, yep. Uh, so that and the, and the nano patch, they're both within the, the vaccines industry, which is a mature industry. It's been around for a long time. It's an important industry, but it's mature. And the development cycles are quite slow, 15 years from idea to product. 
And that's fine, that's a success story. In Fraser's Gardasil is an example uh, of that. But what we're seeing with uh, the fourth industrial revolution is just a complete change in healthcare. Like the, the development cycle is a lot quicker. All of these different fields are taking off. I'm sure we'll hear about genomics shortly from John, John Maddock. And there's all, all manner of these things taking place. What does it mean for me and a medical device engineer and, and what's coming? Well, uh, what's happening with uh, healthcare and precision uh, medicine uh, is that all of this is going to be compressed and it's going to be a lot faster. And we need to try and find a way to compete uh, within this particular space. The epicenter for these developments is very different to the traditional medical device industry. Uh, it's coming from the, the classic Silicon Valley uh, activities, the likes of Google, Apple, Facebook. As one little example, Google's R&D budget is bigger than all of Australia's combined, everything. So we do need to keep an eye on, on those activities. So that's, that's what's taking place, and it's an opportunity, but it's also a challenge. The question is, how do we participate? Do we just watch these, these guys do, do it and, and buy the products that come from it and write about it as academics might, or do we participate? So coming on to the third question, which is uh, how I think I might be able to help in the context of, of ATSI. Well, it, as luck would have it, I've managed to work through some different fields and, and get experienced in multidisciplinary uh, research and, and take ideas forward and help turn them into products. Well, the fourth industrial revolution in healthcare is another level uh, on that. And, uh, and I think the skill sets that we need in order to compete in this space are, are different. Uh, I think they're amplified. We should never get rid of uh, the depth of knowledge in a particular field. You always need to bring that to a table. But the skill and, and knowledge base at aggregating across these multiple fields, that's going to be challenging. And working these another level interdisciplinary teams that strap on artificial intelligence and all these other areas. That's something that we're going to have to learn how to do. And at the World Economic Forum, we're brainstorming the idea of what would a brand new university uh, be in this space and how could, how could it work? So I'll be, be helping in this area. I think it's uh, innovation's an interesting area in the sense that um, unlike classic academic research, innovation is very much a, still an apprenticeship activity. You can read about it and think about it. But unless you do it and do it in, a, in an innovative and successful uh, environment with the mentors, you're, you're, you're missing out. So I believe I can help in this particular area and um, in many different areas, working with governments and, and internationally, uh, essentially advocating, agi agitating and cajoling uh, to make this happen. Uh, but thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.